Steel Division. Fantastic game. I've been playing it a lot. Haven't done any videos for a long time, so I thought I'd give you this one. Now, the latest version of Steel Division has something called scenarios in it. Basically, you're playing one on one against the AI. And in this particular game mode, I found it extremely hard to win over the hard AI when attacking or defending for that matter. We'll go through attacking here. You uh, can see I've put a lot of recon in. The infantry is pretty straightforward. A bit of engineers for the close range work. Tanks, pretty straightforward. Uh, worth noting that the uh, A3s have more armor, 11 armor, which makes you invulnerable towards the 50 millimeter pack guns. And then, of course, you've got the jumbo. I uh, forgot to mention this is the uh, third armored, which is the one I'm going to be attacking with. It's a great division for attacking because of the jumbos. They work like a breakthrough tank. Then you've got the Scots backing them up. Fantastic tank for suppressing anti-tank guns. I don't have any anti-tank guns in my attacking deck. I have got AA. The M16s are brilliant. The M15s are also brilliant. The Bofors, a bit expensive for what they are compared to the uh, M15s, but, you know, they're there. I'll use them. Then artillery, I tend not to use the mortar carriers. The range is not good enough. I really like the M7s. They're fantastic. The range is good and they have armor. So they can't, they can be countered, but it's very hard to counter them unless you're using planes. So planes don't have a lot, just a few uh, thunderbolts for the odd anti tank gun that might be too stubborn to deal with normally. So here we are, hard mode, off we go. Now, the trick about this is you're attacking an entrenched position and the way to do that is don't use infantry and make sure you have um, a screen and make sure you have a main supply route. What we're looking at here is two choices of main supply route really, well three, uh, two tarmac roads and a dirt track on the right side. So you've got to think about which one can you go up in a way where your flanks are protected. And you see I'm marking out here two roads that are pretty close to each other, good cover from one to the other. The left side of the map, pretty hard to go up. The right side, there's a bit of a road, a bit of cover there with that tree line. So uh, that's my third axis of advance. So I'll put a scout on the left side just for observation. That's my uh, approach route, one, two, and three. Those are my three approach routes. I sometimes use these M8s, but they're not very tough. Um, I'll put the jumbo on the left side because that's where all of the left side of the map anti-tank guns are going to be shooting and with 20 armor it should be fairly safe. Um, I will put another M1 in there, I'll put uh, an M5, a Stuart in the center because the center will be only taking shots from the front and also saves a bit of points and then a leader a command tank on the right and then a Scott for each of the three axis of advance. You can see how we're setting it up for three axes of advance where they can uh, inter intermingle their fields of fire. They'll be able to support each other. Then putting the two AA guns, considering whether to put in the third, uh, not really necessary. It, once you've unloaded the both files, it's kind of static. And then here comes the magic. Because every time you see something, you bomb the snot out of it. That's really, I mean, you have your scouts up front and every time you see something, you bomb the snot out of it. That's the most important thing. So what I'll do is I'll put um, some ammo with it because I'm, these these guns are gonna be shooting a lot, serious amounts of shooting, okay? And then a commander unit to make them shoot a little bit faster and so on. All right, so let's move the uh, recon forward. Here we go, just, you know, far forward. It, it, they're expendable. I've got 210 points spare, so you know if one dies, so be it. Make sure that the jumbo is in front and then, you know, a bit of support behind it. And move the AA forward. Remember, you see me doing this wrong once or twice. You need the AA to be absolutely in the open. Okay, you can't put it behind a bush or something because it won't be able to see the approaching planes. That's a big problem. Okay. Um, and here's the sort of light center approach, but you know, uh, you, you'll see it works even though they're two fairly lightly armored tanks. And then on the right side, you know, a, a decent M4, A1 and a Scott, and they'll be advancing there. And there, off we go. That's the units I have on the map. You will notice no infantry. Why use infantry in attack? Infantry are not good at attacking stuff in open country. They're great at holding stuff. Armor is terrible at holding stuff. Now, some would say, oh, but you're just using Blitzkrieg. 
uh, tactics here. This is not true. Blitzkrieg involves extensive use of air power. And trust me, I've read Heinz Guderian's Actung Panzer. Um, so, you know, this is absolutely true. Uh, but here you go. You see the combat units were spotted. Immediately you see me allocating the artillery to, uh, to ground target. And you see the shells coming in and it, it, it's beautiful. Just just look at the rightmost of those AA guns in about three seconds. And there we go. Boom. Okay. So I saw something with no danger to any of my units except the scouts. I saw something and I bombed the snot out of it. And you see immediately I've, I'm done with those guys. I'm reallocating the artillery to shoot something else. I keep moving my armor up behind the scouts, but always in a way where, where the scouts are um, making sure that if there are, is anyone hiding with a, with a Panzerfaust or something stupid like that, I will see them first. Okay. And there we go. Uh, the armor covered the, uh, the recon well enough, took it out, moving forward. Now you see the artillery just keeps firing, keeps firing, keeps firing. Now this tree line, just north of where these tanks are, is, is clearly a... Oh, here we go, here's the HS-129. Now this is a bit of a problem, you can see I've forgotten to move my AA up close enough. The 50 cows from the 3rd Armoured are really good, um, but, but these uh, M16s are brilliant. And down it goes, there you go. This is why you must have air power. And this is this point I realized, okay, maybe I should bring in the Bofors, which I'm then gonna hide behind the house that can't shoot anything, but never mind that, never mind that. Okay, and we see that there's a short range AT gun. Take it out just with the tanks. You see behind that one, there's two AT guns bunched up. Whenever you see that, you just ground target with the artillery and then you bomb the snot out of it. There you see the move with the AA gun, it goes in behind a, a ridge, or behind a hedgerow, it's not great. And there's the artillery coming in, just ground targeting on, on that lump of stuff, and it's really doing a great job. You know, it's 105mm artillery, they're reasonably big explosions. And we have seven minutes to go to the B phase. Now the ideal tempo is that at the point where you reach the outskirts of town, you want B phase to start so that you get a bunch of points so you can call in your infantry. I have a little bit of points spare so you know, if I reach the outskirts of town early, I can call in infantry and you'll see me do that, but not a lot of it, obviously one leader and, and two engineers. Probably go for engineers because, you know, short range. So I bungle up a little bit, I should have killed that AA gun, just, you know, go four tanks on it and, and one go by mess about a bit, so, you know, not great. But still, it does the job. Um, there's probably some artillery shells on the way as well. Oh, and here we go, three AT guns bunched up in a small area. I wonder what's about to happen to them. It is too tempting, isn't it? Yeah, we can move this left side. He's just a flank guard, really. I mean, I'm not going to do anything on that flank. I'm just going to continue to push up here. Let's see if we can take out that A gun. And there you see, just the artillery just keeps going. Just constantly pushing. Artillery takes out the AT gun. That clears the route for my right flank to now move in. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a, a single infantry out on the right flank to just hold the front line there. You want to make sure that the road you've chosen as your main supply route stays open. You know, you don't want your stuff to get shot while it's on its way. In. If that happens a little bit later, you'll see, um, because I could have probably expanded the left side further out. But on the other hand, there is enough space to, to do what's necessary here. Yeah. 
which is to take the town, secure the town, and hold the town for three minutes. There we go, now we move up the, uh, the left flank, the centre, making sure the AA moves up with it. And you see how easily those M8 Scots just pin down AT guns. It's beautiful to watch. So at this point I'm getting so close to town that I can move very slowly and very methodically. I don't have to rush it, I've got 3 minutes 45 to B-face which is where the pressure really needs to go on in town. I don't know how much he's got in there. The AI tends to not put too much infantry in towns where a, a human player would tend to put a bunch of uh, AT infantry and flame infantry in there. The, the AI doesn't do that as much. However, I'm not counting on that. I will put enough infantry in there that whatever they run into um, it, it'll be dead plus I'll obviously use the artillery to, to prepare the ground so that any infantry we run into will be fairly demoralized even before we start here we go slow and easy I don't think have I lost a unit yet I don't think I've lost a unit it's just this is the hard AI right it's got more points and I don't know if it's smarter right not sure actually that is smarter. It may hit better, high accuracy, I don't know. But it certainly gets more points. Ready for order. Finger on the trigger. Alright, now we are at the outskirts of town. We're not quite there yet, but I can I can call in the reinforcements. Um, because by the time the reinforcements get there my tanks will be right outside of town. I don't want my tanks in town, I want them outside of town shooting into town. Um, and that's where we're getting to now. Oh, that's just a tempting target, isn't it? Flak 88 and one of them small guns, LG, whatever they're called. Oh look, poor anti-tank gun, 50mm shooting at my arm at max distance. I mean, not really going to do much now. I think there's probably an artillery shell coming in to say hello in a few seconds. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'll just shoot those two over there and I can actually see. You never know. Well, the both force has fallen behind. Actually, at this point, if the enemy was to send in the... Uh, uh, a wave of strike aircraft I might be in a little bit of trouble uh, but if he was to do that then he wouldn't have any infantry to to beef up the town with and that would be a, a problem in its own right and I don't think he'd be able to send enough aircraft in at this point I mean we're almost in B phase one minute to B uh, you know he won't have the points uh, so it should be alright but the first thing I will call in once we hit B phase is enough AA I don't have to worry, uh, because if I was the AI, as soon as P face hits, I would call in some, some anti-tank planes, right? So AA in first, and then get some infantry in, and then probably a bit of um, large area destruction type artillery like... Uh, oh, look at that. Two MGs turned up out of nowhere and killed my leader. Um, so, you know, a Calliope and probably some off that artillery. Just in case he has fortified town, I can you know, really eradicate that. LG42, is not going to have time to shoot, is it? No. See, and this is where the, the massing of three armored units into one spot is really, really good. You see, the artillery is still going into town, and you can't see it now, but I'm actually hitting one. E and 2E to stop both groups shooting at this point. So there's the last artillery shells coming in. No, that guy got hit by something, don't know what. Oh, that guy. So maybe... Okay, B phase is hit. Here we go. And here's the first plane coming in. Right on time. And you can see my AA units have fallen behind a little bit. 
And here I make a mistake, I put both the M15s on the right flank. There should be a one on the right, one on the left. But uh, still. And there's one half track lost. So my sum total losses at this point, 40 points. And here we go. So as I said, I'm going to put enough infantry in there. And then two leaders, and we're good. So he's going to have to put in a very, very strong counter-attack at this point if he's going to regain any, any of that ground whatsoever. Okay, let's move the tanks forward. Let's move the tanks closer to, uh, to the town to give direct support. I'm really bothered with that flak over on the left flank. Maybe I should shoot it with some artillery. Oh, that's a mortar. I wonder what we do with mortars. I ask my artillery to move in closer so we have full range over the entire map. We need more uh, supplies. And here comes the whole string of, of units of infantry. Okay, so that one guy in town, he's getting hammered pretty badly. That's okay. Got more incoming. He's got an armored unit or two there, but I mean, we've got so much that does it really matter? And there we go. Artillery is now targeting on the flak. It's so far out on the flank. There's not a big threat, but yeah, you know, I'd rather not have that shoot my uh, jumbo on the side. All right. So his light tank in town got blown up, as expected. The uh, the flak over on the left flank is about to catch some uh, heavy rain. Boom. There we go. Ready for order. There's still total losses, 140. What is that? Two half tracks and one leader. Commander. So I'm noticing here that he's got another tank up the other end. It's a small, annoying tank, but you know what? I'm going to send something in there at some point. And I've redirected artillery to do uh, the front left and, and back of town. Not left. And, and here is he be pulling in off map and the Calliope. I don't see him having a lot in town, but you know, just in case. And I've got plenty of points. I noticed the artillery over on the right side, so let's see what we can do about that. This is probably a suicide mission, so you know, just gonna find forget on that one. Because as soon as I do that, he's gonna automatically call in some fighters and he's gonna shoot it down. But I'm gonna kill that artillery points wise, not worth it. But in terms of uh, him disrupting my attack, it's a fairly heavy piece of artillery over there. Uh, so he, he can suppress a lot of my units, and I don't know what he can do. And there we go. Just in time. Wow. Two two star Messerschmitts. Yeah. Uh, I'm considering pulling in the Mustangs, but one Mustang against two of those, I'd have to fight them over my own lines. And yeah, not worth it. Well, there's nothing to be gained. I mean, it's just fighters. What's he gonna do? Yeah, he could strafe my infantry in town. I mean, it's not gonna do anything. Okay, so these guys were falling back somehow. I don't know. Whatever, who cares? Right. And you can see now I'm just I'm just solidifying at this point. Trying to put a leader into the church. I don't know. Just because I want to, that's why. Okay, so he's probably going to kill that half track now because I'm moving it too close to his infantry. No, nope. was I clever enough to stop it? Wow! There we go. So you see, my supply line is just about open. I mean, he's got something somewhere sitting in a in a bush, but as as long as I'm not taking anti-tank fire, uh, killing off half tracks and what have you, it's fine. Okay, so. He thinks that putting a light tank out there is a good idea. <laughs> that light tank is about to have a bad day. Okay, we're putting out the exhausted infantry and putting up some some fresh troops. 
There we go. Two star tank. That should be a one shot. And aiming and off. Transmission damaged. Aha. Maybe we'll do it in a second shot. Who knows? There we go. But at this point, you know, we're done. Right, I need to hold it for another three seconds. And there we go. So, 1,905 towards 307 losses. The Jumbo did its job. See the first artillery piece there, the second, third artillery piece. They all uh, did the job, uh, certainly of, uh, if not outright destroying, then at least pinning everything that we came up against. So, with that, I bid you a good day and hopefully I'll talk to you all soon.